Maxwell Show. On 100.7. WMMS. The Buzzard. Maxwell Show Brown's Notebook with uh, Jim Donovan is coming up here momentarily. <laughs> Go to Brian and Menor. You're on the Maxwell Show. Go ahead. Hey guys. Hey guys. Hey, yeah, what's that thing that one was talking about the broomsticks? And yes. Lemonade? Yes. So you see that down in Jacksonville as well, North Carolina, except they use uh, red light bulbs on the porch, like letting everyone know their husbands are on deployment. All right, I don't believe that. Come on. They're actually going to create a red light district in Jacksonville. Yeah. Really? Isn't like a woman knows how to change a light bulb? Oh boy. Well, seriously, I don't believe it. That's like an urban legend, right? Or, or you know, urban myth. Husband's the part. She puts the red light out. Then you go over there and bang the hell out of her. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, dude, you do. <laughs> right? Yeah, I don't. I don't buy right? the red light bulb. Right? It's a myth. Yeah, it's a broom, you idiots. Yeah. It's a broom. Yeah, it's a myth. The red light, it's a myth. I heard that Rod Stewart put a red light on his porch, <laughs> and then Elton John came over. <laughs> And you know what happened after that, don't you? They had to break out the stomach bump. <laughs> I believe that story up until I was like 19. I had heard it so many times. You know, it was that one, and it was the Richard Gere. Well, it was it was that. It was the Richard Gear one, but before the Richard Gear one it was the dude. This guy I know gave his girlfriend Spanish fly. And he went in the, the store and he came out and he found her dead on top of the gear shift. I don't remember that one. <laughs> that was never an urban like uh, myth. I don't remember. Growing that. up was that she was so horny that she she killed herself on the no. on the stick shift. I never <laughs> heard that. I never heard that. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Was that an urban myth you tried to start? No, dude. Dude, on? that was a big one down in southwest Ohio. That was a big one. I don't remember that. That was the top two. Like it, was, it was that and pumping Rod Stewart's stomach. That and the frozen hot dog. There was always a chick in the high school that tried to, uh, you know, <laughs> wail with a frozen hot dog and half of it broke off. <laughs> Every high school had that horror. Oh, that's funny. Where the one chick could meet the whole football team the whole yeah. behind the bleachers. That's funny. Oh, hold on. There's someone claiming the red light thing's not a light bail. You're on the Maxwell show. Go ahead. How's it going on? It's got... Now, he wasn't joking around. I couldn't figure out what the why there was such a huge section at Home Depot with all the red lights. Lived across from this lady. Turned out she put one in the night after her husband deployed. Every single night for the next three months. Different dude each time. Last four months, the guy actually moved into the apartment with her. Seen her kids call him this guy, Daddy. Let the All right, dude, see, I don't buy that, and I'll tell you why, because certainly her husband would have a friend that would right. be like, dude, your wife's got the red light on. Don't you want to be a little bit more subtle? Yeah. I mean, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> right? I don't buy the red light thing. I don't buy it. Go to Jim. What's up? You're on the Maxwell Show. Go ahead. Hey, Maxwell. What's up? Uh, oh, yeah, my bad, man. Uh, hey, I was calling in. Uh, I heard you guys talking about the, you know, kind of when uh, military spouses or girlfriends or boyfriends or whatever yeah. go uh, go on tour or whatever. Yeah. Uh, as soon as they leave, my girl's actually in the military. She's a, uh, after she went through college, went through the ROTC program, and they, uh, she's in the uh, Army. She's actually like a communications engineer or something. She's mm -hmm. in Afghanistan right now. Now, most people, I think it's like, you know, I, I don't know if it, you know, a lot of people look at it different ways, but we kind of treat it like a long-distance relationship. And i got to say, you know, I get real lonely out here a lot, and, I, you know, I don't know if I'm ashamed to say it, but uh, I've definitely cheated on her on her multiple times. I think that's probably the wrong call, although I guess I can understand it. Does she act the same way in Afghanistan? <laughs> I mean, I assume so. Does she have a thing for beards? <laughs> Does she have a fetish for beards? I'm just wondering. 
I should have left it at Beards. I always go overboard. Always. I get laugh and I want more. I don't want to be funny. I want to keep being funnier. Beards was funny. I can make it funnier, and then, no, you can't. You always screw it up. Jeez, I invited Dalton in on my, on my own radio show. I better not find the guy. I should have been out on Beards. You can't always tell that's what it is. We both suffer from that. Oh, yeah. We got a lab, Dalton. Oh, it wasn't that hard today when you're bringing. Uh, yeah. Werewolf jokes. Werewolf. Werewolf. werewolf the word werewolf's funny. Yeah. Okay. It's funny. Like in my Titus, you know what that sounds like? Uh, a werewolf that can't sleep? <laughs> wow, it's not even funny like that. It's not even oh. like making fun of the fact that it no, wasn't funny. No. <laughs> There's no saving that line. Hey, man. You didn't write it down in your cell. Listen, listen, over there, listen. Uh, yeah, dude, did you? <laughs> no, listen, hey, listen. Derek Jeter's having a slump right now. I can miss a few. <laughs> That's Fair funny. Enough. That's funny. All right, so uh, we have uh, have some sound here. Yesterday there was the uh, speech that the president delivered to school children. I listened and, to it. And, right, and it was awesome. It was fun. Dude, let me tell you something. If I went to that school and yeah. the president of the United mm. States of America came and gave us a speech, I'd have straight A's. Right. I'm like, I am so inspired right now. I'm right? going to study on the first day. Right. right. What parent in their right mind would not want their kid to hear the president of the so United States make a speech geared towards them? Like I said yesterday, even if it was George W. Bush in his final months and he was going to address the school children of the country, I would send my kid to school and be That'd like, be he's, awesome. he's an All idiot, right. but, you know, he's, he's kind of talking to you. You should. All right. Now, hold on. I agree with both of you. I really do. But let me ask you, if we lived somewhere else, would you still feel strongly about the fact that your child should go and have to listen to the leader of where you're from? Yes. It depends. So you're, let's say you're in a country under the, on, on being ruled by an evil dictator. He's showing up. You do not believe in anything that guy's saying. Well, I have to send my kid or else the guy will come cut my head off. Yes, so, yes, I'm different. sending my kid. Yeah, that's true. I guess, I, I guess that's the problem with a country where there's 11 people. Yeah. Uh, is, uh, you know, my head will be cut off or I'll cut my kid's head off. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. I mean, I, there are a lot of people yeah. out there that do not agree with anything. Uh, you but know, he's the president. Obama said, I agree with you. It's, it's unbelievable. It's not even. It, I can understand if the guy, like, there's a big fear of him pushing some sort of agenda. It was an inspirational welcome to the first day of if I can do it, you can do it. It was a very 